Nothing satisfies your soul like the flavor of the American South, and these classic dishes are all the proof you'll ever need. Fried chicken is the quintessential Southern comfort food. While you may find it in many parts of the country, and of course at KFC, it can be a tall order to find fried chicken as good as the stuff they make in the South. The dish likely came to the South via Scottish immigrants. A version of Southern fried chicken appeared in an 1824 cookbook from Virginia, in which the chicken is floured, salted, and fried in lard. Today's versions are floured or battered, often include a buttermilk marinade, and usually have a few spices besides just salt. And of course, it's finger looking good. When non-Southerners think of turnips, they often think of turnip roots. However, when you say turnips in the South, most people picture turnip greens. Still, it's not uncommon to find the roots cooked in with the greens, especially if they come fresh from the garden. The greens taste of pepper and are slightly stronger than mild greens like spinach. They can also be a little bitter. Turnip greens are common soul food cuisine and are often cooked together with smoked meat for a homey taste. Many cooks add extra flavorings such as broth, onions, garlic, and pepper sauce. Some also add sugar to cut the bitterness. If there's a potluck in the South, someone's probably going to bring a broccoli casserole. This was once the gateway food for those who hadn't tried broccoli before. Since it was a veggie not often available in Southern produce aisles when the recipe first appeared, many cooks made it with packages of frozen chopped broccoli. The filling of the casserole contains broccoli mixed with creamy ingredients such as cream of mushroom soup, cheddar cheese, and eggs. Some recipes also call for mayo, while others use mustard. The casserole is topped with a mix mixture of melted butter and crackers. There's a great divide between those who grew up eating stuffing and those who grew up eating dressing. Many Southerners grew up with cornbread dressing, which starts as more liquid cornmeal mixture before being baked into a moist but solid casserole. Dressing may contain broken up pieces of white bread or biscuits in addition to cornmeal, white or green onions, eggs, buttermilk, celery, cream of chicken soup, and broth are also common ingredients. Some cooks add extra herbs or spices such as sage, while others stick with basic salt and pepper. It's not uncommon to find giblet gravy served alongside the dressing to add moisture. Lane cake is the boozy dessert your southern aunt brings to holiday gatherings to shock the rest of your family. This cake was invented by Emma Rylander Lane of Clayton, Alabama. Lane became a county fair prize winner as a result and published the recipe in an 1898 cookbook. If you read To Kill a Mockingbird, you'll find it among the many southern foods mentioned. In the name of God. Do your duty. Lane cake is extremely rich and uses as many as 18 eggs between the cake and the frosting, depending on which recipe you use. It features three layers of butter cake topped and filled with a cooked frosting containing a dozen eggs, sugar, butter, raisins, pecans, coconut, vanilla, and a half a cup of bourbon. Sound good? That's because it is. Once you've tried Lane cake, you'll never forget it. One of the most popular holiday treats in the South is divinity candy. The texture of these delicate clouds of meringue is difficult to describe, so you'll just have to experience them by creating your own. To make them, beat a mixture of hot sugary syrup and vanilla into fluffy egg whites. Some people make divinity by incorporating chopped pecans into the meringue, while others place a dollop of meringue on top of a whole pecan. These cookie-shaped meringues set at room temperature in 5 to 12 hours. German chocolate cake may sound like it's a European dessert, but it originated with a Texas homemaker. It was named after the creator of Baker's brand chocolate, Sam German. German chocolate cake has been a much requested and baked dessert throughout the South ever since the recipe appeared in a Dallas newspaper in 1957. The cake is rich with chocolate and buttermilk, while the frosting is thick and gooey and often features coconut and pecans. Some people also layer the coconut pecan frosting with chocolate frosting. The results are decadent, to say the least, and far tastier than any ordinary chocolate cake. While deviled eggs probably originated in ancient Rome, no southern potluck, holiday meal, or picnic is complete without them. Even if you prepare a lot, they tend to go quickly with some people devouring them in a single bite. There are all kinds of versions of deviled eggs out there, but the southern variety is quite simple. You stuff boiled egg white halves with a mixture of boiled egg yolks, mayonnaise, yellow mustard, and sweet pickle relish. Add a little sprinkling of paprika over the top and hey presto, you're good to go. 
Grits entered into Southern cuisine through the Native American Muscogee tribe, who made their home in what we now know as the Deep South. Over time, grits have evolved into many variations. While it's common to eat grits with only butter, many people add cheese to make cheese grits. It's fun to experiment with cheese grits, too. You can make cheese grits made with green onions or with garlic, and it's even possible to rustle up a cheese grits casserole. While some people eat grits alone, they are also common as a side to eggs and bacon. Coconut cake came to the South via enslaved people, who had been acquainted with using coconuts for baking in their native countries. There's no one standard recipe for Southern coconut cake. However, it's common for the cake itself to enjoy a richness from coconut flavoring and ingredients such as buttermilk or sour cream. Some bakers use a coconut-flavored cream cheese frosting, while others prefer a marshmallow frosting. However, they're all covered in lots of delicious, shaggy coconut shreds.